the U.S. Supreme Court is two months into its current term and in the coming months will take up potential landmark cases, including one that could determine how we draw up congressional districts. Two other cases before the court could also have major implications. One involves government access to our cell phone records. The other looks at whether business owners can refuse to accommodate same-sex couples due to religious objections. To break it all down, we are joined by CBS News Justice reporter Paula Reed. Paula, good morning. Good morning. Let's start first with the cell phone records. What's on tap in terms of that case? So this case comes amid this larger national conversation about how much access law enforcement can get to our digital records. There is no doubt there is more information about me on this cell phone than there is in my entire home. So in this case, law enforcement was investigating a, a string of armed robberies. Mm -hmm. And as part of this, without a warrant, they were able to get cell phone location data. That's, that's when your cell phone pings to a tower. And for the suspect who got all the way to the Supreme Court, he was convicted partially on this data. They had almost 13,000 points of location data for him. And he sued, saying they shouldn't have been able to get this without a warrant. Hmm. So th this case involves the Fourth Amendment, which was literally written centuries ago. <laughs> but now is being applied to new technology. How difficult is it to interpret this? Well, there's a long-standing principle that once you give your information or your data over to a third party, that it's fair game for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But again, let's look at our phones. Think of how much information yeah. you almost have to hand over to a third party if you want a cell phone. Now, there are some laws on the books that speak to this, but they're from the mid-80s. Yeah. Think, think about what technology was like at that yeah. time. They yeah. really just don't apply. So the justices know that they're in a spot here. They meet, need to clarify this so law enforcement can do their job, but they absolutely seemed open in oral argument. They're perhaps curtailing this a little bit. Hmm. Another case that's heard next week uh, involves a Colorado cake shop. Could have very significant implications for same-sex couples. Tell us about it. Absolutely. The only thing more stressful, I guess, than the law enforcement and technology right now is, is wedding planning. And in <laughs> this case, I'm doing it right now. In this case, um, you had a Christian business owner, Jack Phillips. Uh, he, he is a, Chris, a Christian businessman and he employs a lot of his Christian principles in his business. For example, he's not open on Sundays. Uh, he has refused to make cakes that uh, involve alcohol or for Halloween or that celebrate divorce. So, of course, a same-sex couple came to his bake shop and wanted a cake, and he refused. They sued, arguing that Colorado's anti-discrimination laws does not allow, do not allow him to refuse to bake this cake. But he has actually challenged that on First Amendment mm -hmm. grounds. And that's what's so interesting is he's not arguing about religious freedom or anything like that. He's saying the state cannot compel me yep. to create a message that I disagree with. Huh. So what are the implications here potentially for businesses? Well, the sweeping implications. There are some concerns that now anyone who's in a, a quote unquote art artistic business, so that would be in terms of marriage, florists or hair salons, tailors, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps calligraphers as well, that they could now refuse to provide services. And while some people say, oh, look, this is just a pretextual argument, it's a pretty good one. And there was, there was a hunt for a while after the Supreme Court decided that same-sex marriage is marriage. There was a hunt for cases that could get back up to the Supreme Court to really try to carve out some exceptions, just like what they're seeking here. Interesting. Well, not at the Supreme Court level, Paula. You've been reporting on a Department of Justice investigation that involves uh, prominent Ivy League university and affirmative action policies. That's right. I mean, this could potentially go back to the Supreme Court, and I think that's part of the idea. The president himself has said, perhaps it is time for affirmative action to be revisited. Do we still mm. need it? So uh, under that umbrella, the Justice Department is currently investigating Harvard University for possibly discriminating against Asian students in its affirmative action policies. Now, Harvard has declined to provide the Justice Department with everything it wants in this investigation. Uh, just late last night, I spoke with Harvard. They said that they have complied. They've given the Justice Department everything they want. But so far, we've seen in this case, uh, compliance, uh, they're having a little trouble agreeing on what exactly what, that is. what exactly that means. Um, so we'll see on Monday whether or not the Justice Department sues them or if the two sides will continue to proceed uh, with this investigation. But it is unprecedented. It's unusual for the Justice Department to investigate systemic discrimination at a university. And this also happens amid a time when the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division is really rolling back. And this is political appointees at the Justice Department that are leading this investigation, right? Yes, it's a, the Civil Rights Division at the Justice Department. And we tried to ask the Attorney General about this earlier this week. And as I'm sure you've seen on CBS This Morning and Evening News, those questions were, were shut down, which is something I've never seen before at a press conference. The intrepid Paula Reed. Thanks for, as always, Paula.